Hi everyone and welcome to my first ever episode of my podcast Superheroes of Arabia a podcast that was long overdue uh, for the community here in Saudi Arabia as well as the GCC the purpose of this podcast is to talk about uh, the upcoming or the ongoing activities or some of the activities of the past depending on uh, their relevance in today's time and uh, i'm sure all of you have listened to my first uh, podcast which was i wouldn't call it my first episode it was just like a prelude uh, for things to come and uh, basically this started way back in 2017 uh, when i gave my first ever lecture on the topic of superheroes and comic books so uh, if you haven't listened to that please make sure you do because the podcast uh, this podcast is not going to be available for long uh, i think it's going to be removed from the site after 3 months so anyhow uh, we have survived the year 2020 thank god for that and in that respect some of the developments that we have seen uh, in the past year have been the launch of amazon saudi arabia which is huge uh, huge for us because I'm seeing a lot of people selling stuff on Amazon uh, with respect to comic books, old comic books, new comic books, graphic novels, uh, even uh, decals, um, you name it. There, There is all sorts of stuff that's available over there. And in that respect, uh, it's, it's not what you would expect from Amazon.com or the global store. But compared to what we had, uh, it's getting better, I must say. So that was one of uh, the major things that has happened. It has allowed a lot of comic book uh, uh, stuff sellers, superhero sellers to have a bigger platform that, can, uh, that allows them to sell our favorite stuff next thing that has happened the significant thing that happened was saudi arabia finally has its own lego store thank god almighty for that as well because up until this time you could find lego products uh, in various toy stores not all of the collections were there this is a standalone lego store official lego store uh, if you guys haven't visited it, uh, it's in Red Sea Mall in Jeddah. I'm sure uh, they are going to be opening up or they have already opened up branches in Riyadh and uh, Khobar. But it's a sight for sore eyes because now at least I know there is a place where I can get all of the Lego sets. Whether they are Marvel, Star Wars, DC Comics, uh, even if I am a fan of football or uh, things like Minecraft, Harry Potter. All of the things are there. And uh, to top off the last year, uh, we finally saw the opening of Empire Cinema in Al Andalus Mall. So uh, cinemas had really gone down uh, thanks to COVID and the lockdowns that happened. But now things are slowly and steadily getting back to normal. Uh, it's much better than what we were exposed to last year. Uh, everything uh, had gone, had shut itself out in March. So December, I think late December it was that uh, Empire Cinema opened its doors to audiences in Saudi Arabia. Now, in that respect, what should we be expecting for the new year the year we which we have entered we have uh, successfully entered successfully because these were the most challenging times the world has ever seen uh, uh, because of a pandemic uh, you know what's really dangerous about the pandemic is that the enemy is unseen so hats off to everyone especially the frontline health workers who risked their lives to save humanity, whether they were anywhere in the world, whether they were here in Wazat uh, al-Saha, uh, uh, the Ministry of Health uh, managed hospitals, private hospitals. Uh, you guys deserve our respect. 
So in 2021, uh, right now we don't have any confirmed news about a Comic Con that's going to be happening in Saudi Arabia. But there is an indication uh, an exhibition is going to take place in Saudi Arabia in Riyadh uh, in June, first week of June or second week of June. The exhibition is Saudi Entertainment and e Amusement Expo. Now, why is it a good indication? It is because you cannot have an expo if uh, the pandemic uh, is not under control. And since the vaccine has rolled out, uh, and if any of you is a doctor, correct me if I'm wrong, but the more the virus infects people, transmits from one person to another, it keeps on losing its potency. And I think one of the proof has been that uh, the second strain of coronavirus that came about, uh, the Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Tawfiq al -Rabia, he confirmed uh, uh, through official channels that the vaccine that has been launched by Pfizer and AstraZeneca and others is also effective on the second strain of virus. So we could not imagine have, having an expo uh, if the pandemic was not under control or the, the risk of a pandemic wasn't going down or the pandemic was about to uh, be over. Because in an exhibition, it's somewhat like a Comic-Con kind of an experience. The only difference is it's less geeky and more official B2B kind of thing. So uh, I am assuming or hoping, in fact, that we might see uh, Comic-Con taking place in Saudi Arabia uh, in, uh, after Hajj. And at the same time, uh, it's a much needed affair. I just hope that we are Corona free uh, by mid of this year, because there are so many movies that have been lined up. Uh, there are so many TV series that have been uh, lined up, announced uh, both by HBO Max and uh, Disney Plus for Marvel. We are hearing a lot of good news coming about. Uh, if any one of you is a fan of She-Hulk, for example, we uh, have uh, read the news uh, recently that uh, Kristen Ritter, the, the star of Jessica Jones, who played Jessica Jones magnificently, uh, is in talks uh, with uh, the She-Hulk uh, production team. So that is very important because any one of us who has been reading Jessica Jones uh, since the early 2000s, uh, Jessica Jones is a part of the Avengers franchise. And uh, unlike um, Luke Cage, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Jessica Jones in comic books was placed as an Avengers member. Uh, retconned into the mainstream continuity and uh, that's a really good sign that's coming about then we have also learned that charlie cox is going to be involved in spider-man 3 uh, again uh, right now while some, some of them some of this, uh, this information is uh, rumored or uh, hearsay some of it has been confirmed but uh, I will still, for me, I mean, I'll wait for the trailer when it comes to see things for myself uh, because we definitely need uh, Mike Coulter uh, who played Luke Cage. We need uh, Finn Jones who played Iron Fist. We need John Bernthal who played Punisher to be part of uh, the mainstream uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, whether in the TV shows, whether in the uh, movies, these guys need to be there. Another thing that I just read today was that Deadpool uh, is also going to be part of the MCU, which is, a, uh, I mean, if confirmed, it's going to be a major step and a much needed step because uh, Marvel has announced a Fantastic Four movie, which was way long overdue. But X-Men still remain at large and i know for a fact as a lifelong marvel fan that where 
Marvel cannot uh, have a, 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 cannot have uh, a lineup of movies and TV shows that focus on the Avengers, that focus on the Fantastic Four, uh, that focus on the Marvel Knights, but it does not focus on X Men. X Men are as important as Fantastic Four and Avengers. So uh, then we have uh, Black Widow movie. Wanda Vision is about to start fifteenth uh, of January on Disney Plus. Uh, for those of us in Saudi Arabia, we have to subscribe to OSN. By the way, the companies that I'm mentioning and all that, it, this is not uh, a paid promotion or anything. I'm just laying out the facts the way they are. And uh, then you have uh, She-Hulk I've mentioned and the incorporation of uh, Marvel Netflix cast into the MCU uh, the grander MCU that we have at present. Then, uh, one of the biggest happenings that's going to take place is going to be the Snyder Cut of the Justice League movie. Wonder Woman 84, uh, till now, has not received positive reviews, even though there were a lot of uh, high expectations because of uh, the involvement of Maxwell Lord and Cheetah. But uh, I don't know, I mean, if uh, this was like, uh, because I'll be honest, I haven't seen the movie yet, uh, so I cannot uh, uh, elaborate much on that. But the good thing is that they have uh, uh, confirmed that there will be a third part of Wonder Woman movie. So I hope Patty Jenkins, if the reviews are right, if the feedback from uh, moviegoers is right, that uh, Wonder Woman 84 was not as good as it was hyped uh, then we can always hope for the third part to be the best of all three and uh, so which brings us back to Justice League Snyder Cut Snyder Cut uh, we are seeing that whatever uh, Joss Whedon had done with uh, Justice League Zack Snyder is uh either redoing it all of it or you know taking the lead which he should have done now this is and he has said that he after justice league he's not going to be taking up any dc eu projects so uh but i am quite hopeful because uh for me if you ask me i am a marvel fan and, and all but if you ask me what's my favorite superhero team it's the Justice League because it's like, you know, uh, the alpha of the alpha of superhero teams. You've got Superman, you've got Batman, you've got Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash, Martian Manhunter. All of these A-list characters are part of one team. Whereas Avengers, it's, uh, it's, it's a team of A-list, B-list, even C-list characters all together, which is good in its own way. Uh, same goes for X-Men. Uh, same goes for, uh, uh, we can't apply the same for Fantastic Four because it's more of a family, if you will. And all four characters are pretty much uh, loved and considered uh, among the A-list characters of Marvel Universe. So Justice League ne movie needs to be done right. And uh, from what I'm hearing from the uh, Snyder acolytes uh, or the Snyder loyalists is the fact that Snyder is uh, has a better approach to this movie uh, I be I became a fan of Zack Snyder after watching the movie 300 which was based on the Frank Miller uh, novel but I was not so much keen on um, uh, or not not too much impressed by what I saw in Man of Steel and uh, Batman versus Superman because uh, these movies I mean the kind of cast this guy had uh, and I mean, he could have done wonders with that. But there are a lot of people who disagree with me. And of course, Warner Brothers Studios has done a great deal of damage to its own properties by undermining uh, Zack Snyder and his efforts and everything. There are so many stories out there. How many of them are true? How many of them are not? But let's just wait for this grand happening to happen. 
uh, or the grand happening to occur. Uh, we watch it and I hope all of us enjoy it because Justice League is a movie that deserves the best of the best uh, output, the best of the best production. Uh, it's uh, it's not the first superhero team, but it's the most popular superhero team of all time, in my opinion. The first superhero team, in case if you guys are wondering, uh, was Justice Society of America that was uh, created in the golden age of comics. And it served as an inspiration uh, for uh, the Justice League. And... Uh, like I said, I mean, I'm pretty pretty hopeful that this one will make each and every Justice League fan happy. And of course, uh, one of the reasons I am a bit optimistic is to see Dark Side in it. Next up are action figures. Now, uh, action figures have been announced uh, quite a lot. Hasbro has been very much active. Uh, in launching Marvel Legends, of course, but uh, my problem with them is that they keep on relaunching already launched characters. I mean, how many variants do we need for Wolverine? How many variants do we need for Iron Man? Uh, we need some characters that have been missed in all of that. Like, uh, I'm sure a lot of you might be aware of some of the bad guys like Hood, Parker Robbins, who was created during the Marvel Knights era. Then you have Count Nefaria. We still haven't seen any action figure of him. I want to see a build a figure uh, for Mephisto. I want to see an action figure of Nightmare. The list goes on and on. Then Hasbro is really aggressive on Star Wars play sets, action figures, uh, the Mandalorian action figures, beautiful stuff that's coming out from these guys. Transformers, War for Cybertron's uh, range. Uh, the Earthrise and the Siege. And now, I mean, when the third uh, chapter is going to be launched on Netflix, th the toys are just amazing. They are so beautiful to look at. And the combiners and all these things. I mean, but the only problem is that all of this stuff that I've mentioned, it's really hard to find here in Saudi Arabia. I've checked out some of the toy stores. Uh, the range is still very limited. Till now, I did not find uh, Transformers Movie 86 toys or uh, the War for Cybertron toys. Then I would like to move on to uh, various DC uh, action figures, the DC Universe action figures. Toys R Us in Saudi Arabia has a pretty good range for that. Uh, but other than that, I can't seem to recall any other store that's having an extensive collection. Uh, and uh, the, some of the collector's items, I'm not sure why DC Comics is not uh, bringing them out. Uh, DC Collectibles or DC Direct, I think one of the companies, they have closed it down. Uh, but we still need some, you know, uh, collectible memorabilia uh, that celebrates the Silver Age, that celebrates the Golden Age, that celebrates the Bronze Age. Uh, important events in the, the history of characters like uh, Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and even the Justice League. So uh, that is what I can think of in the anime. Uh, the anime scene is going really good in Saudi Arabia because there are a lot of dedicated anime stores uh, that have opened up. I'm not so much sure about Riyadh. I'm going to be. Pl I'm planning a trip to Riyadh and Khobar to see uh, are they, how many specialized stores are there, and I'm sure there are going to be a lot because there's a strong community in these cities as well as cities like Bureda, uh, Madinah Munawwara, Mecca, uh, Abha, who are into superheroes and anime. But as far as Jeddah is concerned. Uh, there is Minal Yaban, there is the Otaku store and the beautiful thing that I see is that it's not just all allocated in one area of Jeddah. No, it's in the north, in the west, in the east of the city and uh, the, these guys are selling awesome collectible stuff. So 
uh, in the end i'll just close uh, the podcast with uh, my thoughts for the last year that even though the pandemic was there and life went upside down it gave me the opportunity to come across uh, really good artists uh, as well as collectors uh, who have a work uh, who have a collection who have um, the ideas that you know really make you go wow if you uh, want to know more about them check out my videos on youtube i've shared uh, i've made vlogs and uploaded them on my channel uh, and uh, now i'll be signing off from the podcast hope you guys enjoyed listening to my first ever episode of superheroes of arabia there's more to come make sure to visit my website sonofjadda.com subscribe to my youtube channel which is again son of jadda and like my facebook page son of jadda thank you very much have a good evening